Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I am here to share with you how I made my first set of cards using the January 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, catch some of my tips and see how they turn out. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope by the end of this video that you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. Once again, I am so glad that you're still here. So in yesterday's video, I shared with you how you could get the free printable for the January 2020 sheet load of cards, and I shared a look at the cards I made using it. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I make those cards. Along the way, I'll give you some tips and tricks about how I do things. And if you're interested in downloading the file for yourself after you see me make the cards, head on over to yesterday's video, which I will have linked in the description box below and as a card at the end of this video. The January 2020 sheet load of cards will yield you 12 cards if you follow the supply list and the cutting guides. In today's video, I will be making 12 cards. I know that yesterday I shared a look at some of the supplies that I used to create the cards. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a few more. And then as I go to start the process, I will go to a voiceover. So if I add any products or tools later, I will be sure to let you know. Now, if I don't answer a question you have while I'm doing the voiceover, make sure to leave those questions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. So before we get started, let's see what I'll be using today. I will of course be using my sheet load printables. One of the pieces gets a decorative edge, so I'm using my Stampin' Up! Scallop Border Punch. I will be using a stamp set that I have borrowed from my mom. It is not in the container she keeps it in, so I'm not sure the name or where it came from. For my inks today, I pulled out my Gina K Design new ink cubes that I got for Christmas, and I have swatched these on a piece of white cardstock. So what I did is, after I selected my papers for today's cards, I went and kind of matched them up to my samples, and then I chose five that I'm going to be using. For my sentiment, I will be using the Gina K Slate ink. It's a gray. For a little accent stamping, I will be using Dusty Rose. Key Lime, Peach Bellini, and Tranquil Teal. For my card stocks, I have pulled out six heavyweight white for the card bases, and then I got out two sheets of a kind of a medium color gray and one sheet of white for my sentiments. For my pattern papers, and again today I'll need two, I already pre selected them from the Splendor kit from My Mind's Eye. My thought is to use these two together, and then sometimes I might use the back of those just for a little variation. Let's go ahead and get crafty. Off camera, before I got started, I did go ahead and cut and fold my card bases. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut my two pieces of pattern paper as shown on the cutting guides. I'll have six pieces that are four by three and three quarters and six pieces that are four by one and a half. To get my papers ready to be cut down, I do cut off the branding strip from each of the pattern papers. Then I cut three strips from the 12 by 12 that are four inches wide. Two of those strips get cut into six pieces that are three and three quarters inches tall, and that last strip gets cut into six pieces that are the same four inches wide, but these are one and a half inches tall. You'll see that I do use the one and a half inch mark to the left of my cutting line. This way I can just scoot the paper down to that line and cut off my next piece. Once the pattern paper pieces were cut, I then got out one sheet of my gray cardstock, which I will be using for CS1. I will be cutting this into six strips that are one inch tall. Now, later I will do the scallop border punch on the top edge and cut it down to the size for my card, but I figure this might be a little bit quicker than cutting this down into 12 pieces now. 
Next, it is time to cut the white cardstock for my sentiment. Ahead of time, I did make sure that each of the sentiments I wanted to use would fit in this size piece of paper, but you will notice later that I do turn these to be horizontal. So I cut this piece of paper into strips that are two inch wide, and then I go back in and I cut until I get 12 pieces that are two and a half inches tall. This is gonna be one of those places that you can adjust this piece to whatever size you need for your image or sentiment. Next up, I will be cutting the second piece of gray cardstock following the CS3 instructions. Because my sentiment did fit on the correct size piece of white paper, I will be cutting these down to two and a quarter inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. If I would have made my white card stocks a different size, I would just adjust this to fit. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using the Stampin' Up! Scallop Border Punch to make my decorative edge, but you can always use border dies like I show here or decorative scissors. Whatever you have in your stash will work. To start my decorative edge, I try to center my 8.5 by 11 inch strip on that punch as best as I can. Then I punch the middle and move down each end until I have the whole strip with that decorative border. Later, once I have these punched, I will cut them down for the cards. Once I had all of those strips punched, I then cut them down for the cards. I did cut them just a smidge wider than four inches because I figured I can always take off length later, but I cannot add it if I need it. Once everything was cut and punched, it was time to start putting my cards together. I did go ahead and flip over some of my pattern pieces to have a little bit more diversity between my cards. Before I can start putting the pieces of pattern paper on my card front, I do need to go ahead and get all of the scallop punch pieces adhered to the back of piece B. All I do is put a strip of adhesive on the front of the scalloped punch piece and then place that behind piece B. Now later, if there is any extra on the end, I will trim that off. To assemble my cards, I place piece A aligned at the top center of the card base and I just try to get a nice even border. Once that is done, I then adhere one of my scalloped pieces centered at the bottom. And if these pieces wouldn't match up exactly or they have overhang, that is why I have that scallop piece there so it would hide any imperfections. I continue to put these together and then we'll do the stamping. The stamp set that I'm using today has seven sentiments and I will be using six of these and stamping each of them twice for the cards. I'll be using the Gina K Slate ink to stamp these onto the white pieces of cardstock and I will stamp each one twice. Now because they are new stamps and haven't been used yet, I am going to ink it up with a little Versamark ink and then ink it with the Slate ink. Sometimes this helps get a better impression on new stamps. I do want to test the stamps out, so that's why I have that scrap of white cardstock on the left. It did a pretty good job, so I decided to go ahead and ink it up and place it onto my card pieces. You'll notice here I did turn my cardstock piece to be landscape, and I stamped my sentiment in the bottom right hand corner. This is because later I will be putting one of the dandelion images from the stamp set to the left, kind of filling up that white space. Once I have stamped each of the sentiments twice, I change my stamp out and then I continue to stamp all of the sentiment pieces off camera. Because I'm using four different inks, I will stamp each of the dandelions in a color three times on the sentiments. I just place it kind of there to the left, trying to fill up the left and the top white space on each of the sentiments. Later, I'll tell you how I decide which color goes on which card.
Once I had all 12 of those stamped, I then matted each of these with the gray cardstock pieces. I just put some adhesive on the back of the white cardstock and centered that onto the mat. Once that was all done, I then placed some foam tape on the back of each of these pieces because when I do put these on my card, I want them to be popped up just a little bit. I did get out my roll of blue foam tape here you'll see and I thought that these might finish that roll off but I do end up with some extra. And here in just a minute you're going to see what size the roll comes at. I buy this on Amazon and it is super economical. If you want to check that out I do have it linked in the description box below. And now it is time to get each of these put on a card base. What I do is I match the ink color up to the pattern paper that is on the bottom of the card. So the first one gets that green, the second one gets that dark teal, and then I have the peach and the pink. I pull the release paper from the foam strips and place that where I think it is pleasing to the eye on the bottom right. I continue this process until I have all of my sentiments placed on my card fronts. Because I do have mine oriented a little bit differently than on the card sketch, I did think that there was some extra white space on the top and the left side, so I decided to get out some white pearls and add three of those to each of my card fronts. My pearls did come on this sheet connected with adhesive, so before I start placing these onto my cards, I did go in with my scissors and just make little snips between each pearl, and then I chose three different places on that card front to place these pearls. This just adds a little extra shine and fills up some of that space. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my first set of cards using the January 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget that if you're going to share a set of your cards with me online this month, that you will want to use the hashtag, hashtag S-U-Y-S-J-A-N 2020 on Instagram or on a video here on YouTube. If you would like to share with a blog post or by sending a card in to me, make sure to check out that Show Us Your Sheet Load video that's linked in the description box below. Now to get your hands on the file to make these cards, make sure to head on over to yesterday's video. It's linked below and it will be linked at the end of this video in a card. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.